We greet everyone the with the Lord Jesus. Now we have reverence to the word of the Lord. I would like everyone to stand up. We're going to open our Bibles in the book of Acts of the Apostles. Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3, verse 6. This is the word of our God. Amen. Then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Lord, we praise you. Thank you for yet this moment of fellowship and deliverance. And we plead, Lord, that in your word you may bless us once again in this place. We pray in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. The fifth book of the New Testament, Acts of the Apostles, it also can be it can be said, it can be said in a different way. Acts of the Holy Spirit. Because everything that is contained in this book, all the actions, all the deeds, all the manifestations of power, of redemption, they were not done by any man, but they were done by the Holy Spirit of God. The Bible describes a man, and this man, when he was born, he was already born with the deficiency. And we can think like this. This man is related to all men, to the entire humanity. And when we are born, we are born with a deficiency. The deficiency of sin. And when man is born with this deficiency, and all men were born with that, because we all have sinned and have been destitute from the glory of God, man does not have access to the temple. Man has no access to the presence of God, because God is holy, and man is not holy, is a sinner. And the word says, my brethren, that here the man, since he could not enter into the temple, man could not have access to the temple because of his deficiency. The word says that he was placed at the door of the temple. The door also even has a name. The door of the temple called beauty. And when you speak about door, you speak, it speaks about a passage from one environment to another, from one place to another, from the exterior to the interior. And that man, he saw people going into the temple. And we can even think how, how anguished, how upsetting it must be to see people entering into a, a specific environment, but you would not be able to you be prevented from entering because of your deficiency. Who has gone through this? You see that everyone has access but you. Everybody has the privilege to enter into the temple of jumping, of praising, 
of glorifying but you, but me. That was the situation of that individual. You can imagine the anguish and sadness, the disappointment of only be able to get to the door but not be able to enter. It's like if you were, you went to a party where there was every type of food there. Everybody can eat but you. And the word says, my brethren, that this man, because he was prevented from entering into the temple, he stayed at the door. And there he was waiting for any man to do something for his life. And good people would help him. They would see his need and help him you know, what was possible for them to do, which is nothing more than uh, an obligation to us. Give to whom as I ask you and do not go astray from who wants uh, a lent money. If I was hungry, you gave me to eat. If I was thirsty, you gave me to drink. I was naked, you gave me dressed. I was in prison, you visited me. I was foreign and you hosted me. I was sick and you visited me. This is the obligation of every human being to give assistance, which is the second commandment given by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Love everyone like yourself. So men live on the dependency of other men. But a certain day, Peter and John and here represented the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, the followers of Christ. Those men were also entering into the same temple. The temple and through the gate called beauty. And when they were about to have access to the interior of the temple, the word says that this man was there. And Peter and John, they gazed at him. So, in other words, the Holy Spirit showed to them, revealed to them that there was a person that was in need of having an experience with God. And he, he was led to that place because on that day, the Lord had a project to perform on the life of that man specifically something that was going to transform his life, that was going to change forever his life. And the word says, my brethren, even about the time, the ninth hour, in, in, in our time, it's like a three of, of the afternoon, the time of the sacrifice, the three of the afternoon. And Jesus says, I came to this time, it was at the time in which Jesus came to operate on behalf into the benefit of man, on the benefit of the entire humanity that was prevented from having access to the presence of God, to the house of God, to the temple of God. And the word says, my brethren, that this man, he looked. He looked to Peter and John. And many times when man a person with a need, he looks to another man. Look to the pastor, look, looks to a religious leader, looks to a governor, to an authority, seeking a solution to their problem. But no man has the power to restore or has the power to save, has the power to transform, has the power to place man inside of the temple. Man in the presence of God, no man has the power to do this. Because his glory was only given to one, which is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But church has a role. Church doesn't save. 
no denomination saves. Maranatha Christian Church does not save. <coughs> no church saves. But the God that whom we serve, He saves. And this was what those the, the brethren at that day were going to demonstrate to that man that was there at the gate, sitting at the gate, called beautiful. A man that had his life, he was really comfortable in the situation in, was, in which he was living, in spite of all the problems and difficulties that he went through in that place. The Bible says, my brethren, that he looked and expected to receive something. And many times we look our lives, we have anguish and sadness, we're disappointed, discouraged. We need something to answer to our needs, spiritual and, and material, and we are expecting to receive something. And he was used to receiving an almond, something that was was material, something that would be able to help and solve an immediate problem. But the Bible says, my brethren, that one of the apostles of Jesus, one of the disciples called Peter, he says something interesting. Look. We don't have gold and we don't have silver. We're uh, uh, studying uh, on s our Sunday school in the book of Songs of Solomon. Everyone here knows that we are studying this book. And whenever we speak about gold, it's related to power. And silver is related to salvation. We don't have the, and he said, we don't have the power of redemption. No one has the power of redemption. No man. The Lord trusted this power, the power to redeem, to transform, to change the life of man. So then Peter and John, they said, we have, don't have gold or silver. We, for ourselves, we have nothing to offer. We are flawed man and imperfect man. We are sinners and also in need of the grace and the favor and the love and the mercy of God. Like every other man. There's nothing special in Peter, in John, in me or in any other person. So Peter, he speaks about this. We don't have power, we have no authority. We don't have the condition to change, the ability to change your life and place you inside of the project of God, inside of the house of God. But we have one thing. But what we have, why? Because we have received. I don't have anything of myself, but I have received. Right? So, what we have received, what we have, in the book of Songs of Sol Solomon, he speaks about that, where the Lord says the following, uh, um, garments of gold we are going to make in, with a uh, nail of silver. In other words, saying that the groom, the Lord Jesus, was going to give his church uh, a garment of uh, a jewel of gold and a, a nail of silver, which means redemption. And the Church of Jesus Christ received the Lord Jesus Christ, which is this power to transform the life of man. So Peter and John they look to this man, to this man in need, and he, they say, "Look, we have no gold or silver." We don't, have power, we don't have power or redemption, but we have received from the Lord this we give you. This I gave you. In the name of the Lord Jesus on earth, get up and walk. 
So this is the transforming power of the Lord Jesus that is in the life of the faithful church. And where is the faithful church? It's a denomination, it's a label. It's a business. The faithful church is a church where the Holy Spirit of God governs. The faithful church is a church where the Holy Spirit of God speaks. The Spirit of God speaks to His church. The faithful church is the one that has the Holy Spirit that reveals what is hidden, what is uh, unveiled. The church of the Lord is the one that brings the revelation and the light to man. Is the one that reveals the secret of our hearts. That's the faithful church. This is the church of the where the Spirit of God is present. The word says, my brethren, that with that word, that man received the power of redemption, the power of resurrection, the power of eternal life, the power of transformation, because it is in Christ. Being in Christ is having a transformed life. He had a deficiency. He depended on others. And today, what we see mostly is this people walking with the legs of other people. And there's an, an, an expression in Brazil that says that you, you do what everyone else does. You being guided by other people influenced by your peers, but no one can place you inside of the temple of God, inside of the project of God, because this role is the role of the Holy Spirit. But on that day, that man, he received this power. He received a word, and the word got this man on his feet put in his main standing. And the purpose of God for mine, for your life, is to place us standing, is to make us stand up, is to give us an opportunity. The word says, my brethren, that when this man received this word in the name of Jesus, get up, he got up. Why is that? Because with the power of Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit. And when the Lord speaks to you, my brother and sister, get up, make a stand, stand up, because I have a work to perform in your life and to your benefit on your behalf. Get up because I want to transform and save you. I want to place you inside of my project. The word says, my brethren, that this man got up. And more than that, the word says, my brethren, that the, his feet and calves got strong. And now he was firm, firm, steadfast. He's he has got up and make a stand and is now is firm. So in other words, he has made a definition. He has now a path to walk. Now he has found salvation in Christ Jesus. Now he, his life has been transformed and his sins have been forgiven. His feet and calves got strong and the word says that he jumped. He jumped up. The cripple, the man had a defi physical deficiency, now is jumping. And Jesus comes to the Samaritan woman he said, if you drink of this water, if, it, if, I, if you drink the, of the water that I give you, you turn into a fountain, that will jump into a, to eternal life. So when this man received this word, he jumped to eternal life. He jumped from one place to another. He was transported by the Holy Spirit. He was transported by the Holy Spirit. He jumped. He walked. Why did he walk? Because Jesus is the way. And when you walk on this path, you have a meeting with, her, with the truth. And when you discover the truth, you are able to reach eternal life in Christ Jesus. 
and he entered with them and he entered with them into the temple. He didn't enter alone. He entered with them. He entered in fellowship with them because church is the body of Christ. What, uh, that's what an anointed said in the morning, which was very interesting. He said, while the king governs, the church is preserved in fellowship. So the church governed by the Holy Spirit with the power of redemption entered with that man into the temple of God so that he would live the eternity. And sometimes we only stay at the gate. But being at the door or knowing the door, there is not going to be a transformation in our lives. Transformation happens through the Holy Spirit. It is a personal experience that that man had on that day, on that meeting with the servants of God, with the Holy Spirit. And his life was transformed. And he entered into the temple. I entered into the temple of God, in the time of God, and now I leave the eternity. My, my soul thirsts for the Lord before entering into the temple. Now all our thirst has been quenched because the Lord is present in our lives. Walking, jumping, and praising the Lord. The result of salvation is exactly like this. And of you praising the Lord. Because the dead cannot praise the Lord. But we who are alive, we praise the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He has expressed his, expressed his gratitude because he was in this place, because he was saved, because he was delivered, because his life was transformed. He entered to praise and he entered to glorify. And he entered to praise the Lord. He enters to exalt and to say what the Lord has done in on his life, uh, on his behalf and to his benefit. Amen.
Aleluia. Glória a Deus. The Lord has shown a man. He came to participate with us on the service tonight. And when he came, I'm going to speak literally. When he came here to the door of the church, he was received by an angel. And this angel made an exchange with him. We take the garments that were uh, dirty and ripped. Os sapatos que estavam velhos davam um novo. Ele usava óculos escuro. Também tirava esses óculos. And after that, he was guided to the temple of the church, and there he would sit down. And during the the period of the message. Another angel would come to this individual and do a surgery on his mind. And after this surgery, he would leave this place glorifying the Lord for the peace that he was able to achieve tonight because for a long time he had not felt any peace. We just sang a song, the peace that you need, the joy that you need, and how it continues today you can find it and today you found this peace here what does it mean a man with dirty and ripped garbage uh, garments the clothing speaks about salvation when it's dirty because it's top being wash, washed let's wash our garments in the blood of Jesus he stopped washing the garments with the blood of Jesus. When you don't wash your garments, it gets dirty. That's the same with the life of anyone. If you stop pleading to the Lord or sanctify yourself, it's going to get dirty. Ripped. When you rip something, what do you see? You see the flesh. The flesh is exposed. I'm going to speak very clearly because you already know about the Word. So it exposes the flesh human reason, the human understanding, the carnality it enters. So now shoes, old shoes, what does it mean? It's a gospel that is, has grown older in your life. It withered on, on the walk. There's a man called Caleb. He walked for 40 years on the desert with a group of Israeli, Israelis. And he said, I had 40, now I'm, I'm 80, and my vigor it remains the same. And the word of the Lord says that the people that walk with the Lord during the 40 years, the, the garment didn't get older or worn out or the shoes. So when man is in the presence of the Lord, it does not suffer a war, wearing out, and it's preserved by the Holy Spirit of God. And there is more for you. Sunglasses. You are walking in darkness. You don't allow the light to open up your eyes so that you can see the true meaning of God for your life. The mind. When the video is in this situation, the mind is disturbed. You remember Saul? King Saul, he left the project of God and his mind was disturbed. But tonight, God is moving in your life and on your behalf and to your benefit. My brother, God loves you. He has revealed it not to expose you, but to make you understand that He loves you and He has a project of salvation, of redemption for your life. Today you are receiving this transforming power of the Holy Spirit. The blood of Jesus is purifying you and forgiving your sins and transforming your life and give you, uh, once again, access to the presence of God. And the Lord was also showing a man that has come to the church, has come several times, but he does not believe on everything that is said, the spiritual gifts. 
in spite of the fact that he's come to the church, or attending the church, he does not believe in his spiritual gifts. That's all right. You're right. You have, you have all the reason in the world. If you have not felt this experience before, you won't believe. But the Lord was showing that he made a, pr a purpose with the Lord, and he prayed to the Lord, saying, Lord, if there is no spiritual gift speaking to me spe specifically, I will never return to this church, or I'm not going to any other church. Isn't it true that you s spoke to your heart? And the Lord has shown and revealed that in this week that has passed, there was an event that happened with this man, and this incident almost became an accident. And he thought within himself, oh boy, how lucky I am, I got lucky. My brother, it was not luck, it was God. Luck, you are lucky when you have God. God, and the Bible says that God is my luck. It was not luck, my, my brother, it was God. And God did this, delivered you, so that you would have this opportunity of meeting and knowing Him in intimacy and having an eternal life close to Him. That's, that demonstrates the great love of God for the life of this man. The Lord also has shown a couple. This couple has attended our church for a long time in Brazil, or participated, or they were members. But when they came to the United States, they visited many other denominations, but they did not feel comfortable in any of them. But the Holy Spirit brought this couple tonight to this place to make them remember of the experience that they have, they had in the presence of the Lord. The Manatha Christian Church is not the, the kingdom of God. It's not. It's part of the kingdom of God. The work of the Holy Spirit is where two or three are gathered in the name of the Lord. The work of the Lord, the kingdom of the Lord is where, where the king is sitting at. The king, Jesus, is governing in, in the fellowship with the Holy Spirit. So that's the work of the Holy Spirit. The place where God reveals, God speaks, where God manifests His power, His grace, and His favor, and His mercy. Amen. Let's sing a song.
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Lord, we praise you. Thank you. We're grateful for this moment of fellowship and deliverance, for the government of Holy Spirit upon our lives, for the fellowship, for the transformation, Lord, the power of redemption upon each one of us. We praise the Lord for the sacrifice of Jesus, for your blood shed, for the veil that was ripped apart. We glorify the Lord for your great love towards our lives. Receive our service, our praise, our adoration, our gratitude, Lord. And we ask especially for these people that have been identified in the spiritual gifts. And once again, your Holy Spirit may be acting in their minds and hearts. Lord, bringing peace, comfort, refreshing, and relief. And cause them to understand your plan, your project, your call, Lord, for their lives. So that we may all enter into your house in your eternity. And there, praise you forever, your name. Give us a great blessing uh, not, you know, in your presence. You pray in the name of Jesus. In your name you say, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of our good and eternal Father, and in sweet and eternal consolation of the Holy Spirit may be with the people of God now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. Our service is over. On Tuesday, we are going to have the Sunday school study the children have already received, or the brother have already received. On Wednesday, we have a women's service, also through Zoom on, at 8, and Thursday at 8 at night, also through Zoom. And the brethren, we're going to receive the link to have access to all those services. And this coming weekend at 6 o'clock in the morning, we have early dawn service here in this place. You can all participate. The service is open to everyone. The period of prayer and the early dawn is an instruction from the Lord. The ones who seek me in the morning, they will find me. So you're invited to come here at 6 o'clock in the morning, every Saturday. Also Saturday at 7.30 p.m., we are going to have another service of glorification of the Lord. Sunday at 10.30 in the morning, we have Sunday school and also Sunday at 7.30, another service of evangelization and glorification of the name of the Lord. I would like to thank you for you who are here with us, received the invitation and came to this place guided by the Holy Spirit. I want to say that you are welcome to this place. If there is any doubt regarding the gifts or the word, if you need any help and assistance, we are all here at your disposal. Raise your hand so that we can identify you. And we're going to have it will be our pleasure to give assistance and pray for your life. Amen.